Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michelle Sanford. I am a TEDx speaker. I work for Microsoft and I am the chairman of the Australian Computer Society in Western Australia. Um, when they asked me to do something for the women in tech area, I initially thought I was going to do maybe a sort of career advice or top tips that I got for myself and other women working in tech, uh, which uh, is, is a pretty fun kind of panel thing that I do sometimes. But then I thought, why don't I talk to you about the thing that I have the greatest expertise in? And that is using, uh, using the free tools that we have available to us to increase our own brand influence. I know that for a lot of women, it's they don't want to boast about themselves. They don't want to push themselves forward. They don't want to seem like they are being too aggressive in their careers. And so it can be very difficult to find a way forward in your career. Luckily, there is some tools, some free tools available that can help us with that. And it's not just women this helps. This is really any introvert developers will also benefit from this. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story that will uh, get to what we're talking about. So I have to go to a lot of big networking events as, as part of Microsoft and as part of my role as chairman of the ACS. And I don't like it. I am super, super shy and introverted. And I get really nervous before I have to go to a big event and I don't want to approach strangers. I don't want to talk to them. I'm afraid I will say something stupid. I don't know how I can even. Well, I'm very small. I'm only five, five foot tall. And so uh, standing amongst all those tall men in suits, I often feel really intimidated. So I will go to events like an hour early so I can scope out the room and uh, work up the courage to talk to people. I had one such event a couple of years ago and it was a big gala dinner, about 500 people there, maybe more. Um, and I arrived an hour early, as I said, and was standing there at the side of the room, just calming myself down and um, working myself up to approaching people. And then I saw someone that I knew and I thought, well, this is good. I can go and say hello to that guy and he will introduce me to the person that he's talking to and I'll have a sort of warm introduction and, and be off to a good start. So I went over and said, hi, Pat. And he turned to me and said, oh, hi, Michelle, do you know so and so? He's the CTO of the Department of Big Government Things. <laughs> now, I immediately felt a little faint. I was not prepared to go straight in and meet some high level executive from government. I was working in the commercial space at that time and I never had any access to government executives. And so this was a great opportunity for me. And <laughs> I was about to blow it because I was so nervous. My tongue was stuck to my mouth. I started sweating. I couldn't remember my elevator pitch. I couldn't remember my name. Does anyone else get like that? <laughs> probably not as bad, probably just me. Anyway, he leaned in and he smiled at me and he said, hey, you're Michelle Sanford. I follow you on LinkedIn. I love your articles. And then I immediately react, relaxed. <laughs> I didn't need to say anything to impress him. He already knew who I was. He already knew what I thought and he liked it. We're able to skip over that awkward part at the start of any relationship where one of you is thinking, who the hell is this? And the other one's thinking, oh dear God, please don't look at me and judge me as insignificant. I realized that I discovered something particularly sweet. How to use the tools to shorten the time to prove MVP. And by MVP, I of course mean minimum visible person. I'd use the tools to skip the elevator pitch. And this is the holy grail for introverts. Less face time with maximum output. So by the end of this session, you're going to know how to establish credibility from a distance, influence by volume, access all areas, and use these skills to position yourself for the career that you want. 
So, <clears throat> if you're already using LinkedIn, I hope you are using it well and fully, but plenty of people when they start using it, they do not fill in very much at all. And then they wonder why they're getting spammed with a bunch of sales people or people offering them jobs that don't really suit their careers or where they are right now. This is a kind of summary as to what you what you should be doing and why you should be filling it all in. So if you start right at the top, I've got a banner there. Um, which I have customized so that it just by looking at that top without even saying any words, you can see that I'm a TEDx speaker, that I'm affiliated to the ACS and that I work for Microsoft and that what I care about is inspiring the next generation in tech. Uh, there is a good photo of me there, which means that anyone at a networking event who was looking for me would be able to recognize me on site and they wouldn't be embarrassed walking around the room saying, hey, does anyone know Michelle Sanford? I'm looking for her, does anyone know? They can come straight to me and, rec and because they see what I look like. Um, underneath your name on LinkedIn, there's an opportunity to put some information. A lot of people just write their current job title and company in there. I think that's kind of a waste because you have another opportunity to write that further down the page in the experience section. At the top here, you should be putting who you are and who you are is generally so much more than just your current job title. Most people are not their current job titles. Um, I am a service delivery manager for Microsoft which doesn't tell you anything interesting here at a developer conference, doesn't tell you that I go to as many developer conferences as I, as I can, that I organize a load of events for the developer community, that I, I love coding and building bots in my spare time. Whereas uh, <laughs> what I have put in, the, in my tagline there now tells you a lot more of those kind of things. It is more who I am than my job title. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want to put things in there that you think you are or you don't know yet who you are, you could put a quote, something that um, I used to have in there, uh, change the world or go home, which is one of the Microsoft taglines that I thought was particularly relevant. That's what we are here for as developers. We are here to change the world, to make a difference, to build things, to create things. Um, OK, and then the next section down is the profile. Um, you see there are three lines that are displayed by default. And if you want to see more, you have to click on the show more section. So you need to make those three lines count. That needs to be your elevator pitch and that needs to be really spot on and all the best things about you in those top three lines. Don't waste them waffling or, or disassembling. See underneath, there's a bunch of links to videos. That's adding a lot of colour to my profile. You can add videos in there, you can add recordings, you can add presentations, you could add photos, you could add links to articles, to your blog, all sorts of stuff in there. It gives you a little colour and it makes you stand out from all of those other CVs that people are looking at that are black and white Times New Roman with no colour in them and no interest and they're all pretty much the same and all very blah. Um, LinkedIn gives you a real opportunity to show yourself off and to be distinctive, to be creative and to, uh, yeah, to, to be interesting. Uh, the next section is who are my connections? I'm going to talk about that a bit more later, but um, yeah, I'm going to talk about that later. <laughs> and the next part is thoughts. So this is all my articles, my posts, my activity. What you do uh, in your activity is what puts you at the top of other people's streams every day. And so if you don't do anything, then you are not going to be seen by anyone, which if you're thinking that you are shy and you are not the kind of person that pushes yourself forward and so therefore that's OK. Mm, it, if you don't do it on social media, then it means you need to do it in real life. So those are your two choices, really. 
OK, so here's a couple of, well, here's three examples where you can see the difference between things. So that first one, no profile picture, no profile picture. I generally do not accept connections from people who are ghosts. If I cannot see what they look like, then uh, I, I think it, it, it smacks of laziness. It looks like someone does not, uh, cannot even be bothered to put their photo in, cannot be bothered to show me their face. It looks a little bit shifty, a little bit um, un, untrue, uh, unreal, unauthentic. Um, see the banner is also the blue default banner. They've really wasted all of that real estate there. They could be saying something about who they are and what they do, and instead they've just left it blue. Uh, if we compare that to Stephen in the middle one, he has put a, a nice banner to show that he's speaking at a conference. He's put a photo of what he actually looks like. Uh, the only thing that I don't like there is that instead of using the tagline for something more imaginative, he's just repeated his experience and his job title. However, he is the managing director of his own consulting firm, so maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's glamorous enough to lead with. Um, the other thing, though, is if you look in the experience box there, it's it's kind of grey next to his company. That's because he has not he had not at that point set up a company page. So if you have your own company, set up a company page for it so that that box is not grey, so that it shows as a real company. Um, Anto's, uh, I like even more. She has a picture of the Redmond campus uh, in Washington in the United States for Microsoft. And what that says when you look at that is uh, her name is Antoinette Jago and she has the full might of Microsoft at her back. <laughs> She's also put a, a really good description of who she is and what she is trying to do uh, for good in the world. So then we move down. Uh, you have the experience section. You can put all of your jobs in there and um, show your work. Indeed. So you see in every single section, I have attached more colourful articles in there or videos or things that that you couldn't do on a CV, that you couldn't show more than what you type. I don't know if you have ever tried to read a strat stack of 50 CVs, but they are super boring after a while because everyone has experience and everyone has some qualifications. Um, <laughs> but you have an opportunity here to add a little bit of colour, to add those extra things in that will showcase who you are. Put them in, attach them. Um, the good thing about education these days, especially for us working in technology, is that it's not all about your degree anymore. <coughs> uh, loads of online training is free and you can get certificates for it. Right now I'm doing the free code camp. I don't know whether you've all had a chance to look at that, but I think it's amazing. Um, and you can get certificates from free code camp as you complete each section. Um, also in Microsoft, um, using the Microsoft Learn, all free online training. The certification you have to pay for, but it's like, I don't know, $100 or something. Um, but there's a lot of them that are online and are free and you can get a certificate and you can attach it to your profile. And it shows that you have that continuous learning mindset that so many people are looking for. Volunteer experience also super important. So uh, sometimes you you don't have you might not have a lot of experience, especially at the start of your career. But there are things that you can volunteer for that will show that you have a lot of the skills that people are looking for in work. So, for example, I had kids church team leader. This shows that I'm kind to children. Uh, it shows that I'm a leader. Um, so Optimist International, this is volunteering and we raise money to help uh, women and girls who are disadvantaged. Um, WAITA, that's a conference committee. 
and a leadership pipeline facilitator. Uh, it shows, you know, I have leadership skills that I like to pass on. So these things are, are sort of all adding extra referenceable things about my personality. And so someone just skimming my profile there would be able to tell a lot about who I am and what I can do. This is my favourite thing about LinkedIn, my absolute favourite thing. I don't even know how many recommendations I have on there these days, more than 30, I think, and they span my career. Um, in the old days, if you had to get a reference from someone, not even old days, actually, I moved to Australia from Belgium in 2010 and I did my first round of interviews via Skype and two days after I landed in Australia I did my second round of interviews and um, they never called my referees it would have been hard for them to do that because Perth Australia and Brussels are not time zone aligned so someone would definitely be calling someone out of hours plus they don't speak French or Dutch and <laughs> Um, it, well, it, it would be a very painful experience. And also, how could they validate anything? If someone from Australia is calling someone in Belgium that I said that was the vice president of IBM Belgium, how would they know? How would they check that? It's just a phone number and some, some Dutch guy picking up the phone. <laughs> um, but LinkedIn is, is, is practically a blockchain. <laughs> What you have there is people who have given me recommendations. You can click on those people and see who have given them recommendations. You can look at their profiles and see whether they look dodgy or whether they look legitimate. Um, you can follow the bouncing ball. You can follow the chain through and through to make sure that the ones that reference me have references and the ones that reference them have references. You can, you know, it's, it's really, really, really good. And these things will never be lost. So I have those those recommendations from when I worked at IBM. I have those recommendations from little help desk agents that worked for me way back then, who are all grown up now and in big serious <laughs> jobs somewhere else in the world. And but I still have their words from when when they worked for me and it's it's 360 degree feedback so you you have people who worked for you you have people that were my bosses people that were my partners people that were my customers people uh you can you can put people that are your friends or you know that were students with you that are colleagues if you're especially if you're at the start of your career as long as they say you know i'm i'm her friend and i'm saying as a friend she's someone i would trust with my life uh, it's it's still worth something. It's still giving some insight into who you are and what you're like. Make meaningful connections. A lot of people say to me that they only accept connections from people they know. Those people are doing it wrong. <laughs> if you only accept connections from people you know, then you will never get outside the current group that you are. You will never meet new people. You will never meet new opportunities. Uh, like where, what is the advantage? You may as well just, you know, look around your office and only speak to the people that you see in the same room as you. You have to uh, take, take advantage of the, the free tool make connections for people who are in the same industry as you, who are in the same job as you, who are in the job that you want to be in next year, the job you want to be in in five years time, the job you want to be in in 10 years time, connect to them and tell them why. Don't just click connect uh, and because a lot of people will not accept a blank invitation, they will simply ignore it. But if you tell them why you want to connect, that you have seen them at a conference and you were so inspired, or you uh, would like to be a, a cloud developer advocate in, in a few years time, and so you're trying to connect to as many advocates as you can so that you can learn what they do and how they do it. and. Uh, yeah, pe most people will accept that if you give them a reason to connect. Um, I also will connect with students 
So there is nothing that those students can give to me right now. I'm the one that's experienced and they're the ones that have no network and no experience. However, in the future, in the future, they will they will be the CEOs of the future. They will be my bosses. They will be my colleagues. And uh, so I think we all have a duty to look around and to help those that are behind us in the career path and to ask for help from those that are ahead of us in the career path. And this is what uh, LinkedIn Connections allows you to do. So when I started using LinkedIn, they didn't let everyone write articles. You had to be an, an influencer and invited to a special program to blog. But a couple of years ago, that changed and LinkedIn opened up the world of thought leadership to anyone that wanted to give it a go. So I didn't start writing straight away because I was scared. Uh, what if people didn't like what I wrote, thought it was stupid or boring or irrelevant? But here's the secret. <laughs> When you start writing, you don't have any followers. The only people checking out your articles are the people that already really like you and want to know what you think about stuff. So you'll either get no response, no likes, no comments, no shares, or a little bit of positive feedback. So it's it's not so scary. It gives you time to grow. And so just, you know, write something, post it, and you should know. Great thing about LinkedIn is you can go back and edit that article anytime, even after you've published it. So if you've accidentally written something hugely offensive, you can go back in and edit that, change it, correct it, make it clearer. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't start, then you're you're never going to improve and you're never going to grow. Well, I should say I have a lot of articles on my profile about um, getting started, about writing, about improving your LinkedIn. So check those out if you want more advice. Um, here's, this is my favourite article. Um, everyone has something worth knowing. So, <coughs> so I wrote this article called So You Want to Work at Microsoft? And it was about my hiring process and about uh, how you get to work at Microsoft, what you need to do in order to get in. Um, that was extremely popular because, yeah, even if people in the industry do not want to work for Microsoft, they do want to know what it's like to work for Microsoft so they can make an informed decision about that. So, yeah. I have a couple of grad hires and uh, I said to them they should write the same story from their perspective and they said, but you've already written it. Why would we, why would anyone else read anything rather than just reading yours? But the thing is, everyone's hiring process is different and you each have different insights that you share. You each have a different experience. People want to know about that. They don't want to know what is the marketing view as to how you should apply to work at Microsoft. They want to know what it's really like to real people. So everyone could, everyone who works at Microsoft could write that article and each one would be different and each one would be interesting. But say that's too much. Say you think you're not ready to write articles right now. Well, um, there are, then I just say do three things each day. You want to like something, you want to comment on something, and you want to share something. Um, <clears throat> not something random. Like something that will link you to the topics you care about. So if you're a web developer, <coughs> like some interesting web development articles, or like something by someone who is an expert in the field of, um, I don't know, CSS or HTML. Um, because your, the things that you like show up in your feed <coughs> and you are kind of linked to that topic, that expertise, just by the things that you follow, the things that you read. Um, to be more specific about that, this second one in the middle is a, a DevOps article that I did not write and I shared it. Now you can share it or you can share it and put some comment over the top. <coughs> if you um, if you just share it, you will have much less engagement and much less interest than if you tell people why you think they should read it. If you give them a little bit of a comment over the top, they will they are much more likely to engage with it. 
and you will likely get new connections or followers out of it. Um, I was, that week, I was sharing, I was reading a lot of stuff about DevOps and I was sharing all the stuff that I thought was interesting and I was telling people why. At the end of that week, I was invited to speak at an event about DevOps. Now, at the start of the week, I would have said, I am no expert. I'm just someone that's reading things and trying to learn about that topic. At the end of that week, my network considered me expert enough to talk about it. And theoretically, well, not theoretically, practically, I was because I had read an awful lot of stuff about DevOps and how does anyone become an expert in something by learning about it, by reading about it, by working on it. Um, and that's what happened. And then, yeah, I <laughs> I did talk about it because you have to say yes to the opportunities that scare you. Um, the final one's uh, pretty cool. Um, Daphne, one of the leaders in our organisation, she had uh, shared just a standard news article about a public transport strike and how it had brought the city of Sydney to its knees because no one could get to work. And her comment was all about why in this day and age uh, does a public transport strike bring us, bring a city to its knees? We should be able to work from anywhere as long as we have a laptop and an internet connection. I mean, not everyone, obviously, nurses, doctors are going to need to be there with their patients, but a lot of people could be working from home and freeing up what available transport there is for those that actually need to be there physically. Uh, so she turned an article about public transport into a conversation about productivity and collaboration, which she could then, you know, link to Microsoft products like Teams and other productivity platforms. Here's some examples of posts that I've made um, that are just sort of like in, in every single day, there is something interesting that you see or do, and you can easily just take a picture of it and write a little bit about it. And each of those has, you know, so <laughs> that one with Jason and his baby, 38,000 views it had. What people liked about that is because I came into the office in the morning, I saw Jason there with his baby in his hand and his phone on his ear frowning. And I said, one of the things that I love about working at Microsoft is that you can integrate your life however you want to. So if you need to bring your baby to work, you can do. If you want to work from home, you can do. Um, Jason took a picture later in the day of himself posing with his baby and it didn't get nearly as much engagement. The reason being, people loved seeing him like that, struggling, frowning, real life and authentic. It's not easy to have a baby and to be working, but he's doing it anyway and Microsoft is okay with that. That is what they wanted to see. So don't be, you know, on LinkedIn, don't be posting your perfect life. Be honest and authentic about who you are and people will appreciate that. Uh, this is what I do for conferences. So, um, you know, obviously a conference with thousands of people is super scary to me. So before I go to a conference, I will look up speakers and I will post pictures of them and say, I'm really looking forward to going and seeing these speakers at this conference. And then after I've made the post, I will uh, send connection requests to all of those speakers that I've highlighted and say I'm looking forward to meeting them at the conference. Then when I get to the conference, instead of being at the back of a queue of attendees trying to talk to these wonderful speakers, uh, I'm actually sitting with them and having a coffee or a beer because they recognise me, they see me and they want to thank me for spruiking their session and for connecting to them in advance. Um, This one's pretty, this one is, um, this one is when someone does something for you on LinkedIn, you can do something back for them. So um, I saw Oscar speaking uh, at a, a Microsoft conference. I knew that everyone in the room would want to speak to him afterwards and I wouldn't have a chance. So I took a picture of him on the stage with a completely engaged audience, made the post and then sent him the request saying, I hope you'll connect. Uh, that was a great session. So he uh, 
he accepted that, of course. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> and then he uh, asked me for a recommendation straight away. And why wouldn't I? I'd just seen him. Easy for me to write a recommendation. And so I did. And then in response to that, he then sent me a present, which was really glorious. And to reward him for that, I posted that he'd sent me a present and talked about what it was. So I call that social currency. <laughs> people thank you and you thank them. It's the goal is raise people up rather than raise yourself up and you will be raised up with them. So here are the bunch of articles that um, that I've written around sort of LinkedIn and about job interviews and about stuff like that. Um, if you, there's more stuff than that on there. So if you just want to connect with me on LinkedIn, do that. I'd be really happy and check out some of those articles. And uh, yeah, I think, I think I am done. So now would be the time for questions, I guess. Thank you, Michelle, Thank you, for being with us. Well, well, I do need, do to, need to, to up my LinkedIn game, game, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot, but Right now, after seeing your, your presentation, I think it's scary to start from somewhere. What do you think are the most important things to update right away? Because um, my profile, I think I have a profile picture with shades on. And uh, <laughs> I don't have any, any work experience um, down below in, in that section. So is it that or should I start with something else? You, yeah, definitely a photo where you can see your eyes because you, <laughs> you have shades on that looks suspicious. I know, right? <laughs> it looks like you have something to hide. Um, but the, the work experience section, yeah, you don't have to write an essay like I have done. You can just start with, you know, listing the, the job titles and the companies and then later come back and fill other stuff in. Um, but I think the, the most important thing is, yeah, your your picture, the banner across the top, use that, customize that um, and the 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 profile at the top, the first three lines, the first three great things about who you are and, you know, what you do. Mm -hmm. OK, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that was it for me. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so thanks for being with us and. Uh, again, thank you for being uh, at Dev Talks. If we're going to have more questions, we're going to send them to you and maybe we'll get some answers from that. Sure, and I will um, send the presentation through so that um, in case anyone wants it, they can have it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.